if you okay? could introduce yourself and tell me what we're doing today. Hi, I'm uh, Lauren Glorioso. I'm with Mass Wildlife. I'm a review biologist with the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. And today we're doing a utility uh, turtle training for workers um, who work on uh, vegetation management for uh, the Eversource and National Grid Utilities. Um, we're having them come out uh, to train them on how to search for eastern box turtles um, and other turtle species in the right of way. And why is it important that they are aware of these turtles in their habitat? Um, so eastern box turtles and other state listed species like wood turtles, um, they are protected under the Mass Endangered Species Act. Um, and because utility right-of-ways offer um, open and early successional habitats for the turtles, they uh, will often be found in these areas. So if these, uh, the vegetation management is actually really important for keeping that open, but we don't want a conflict between the actual turtles uh, and any machinery that are out there. So training the utility workers to look for them, know what they look like, and know what habitats they're found in, um, that's better for the species and, um, and it's really good on, on the part of Eversource as well. In these are state protected, so there's not as many of them as there we would probably like. Why is that? So mostly habitat loss is usually the driver of why species are, are rare. Um, they're uh, they're a, a well, even though they're a turtle, they're not a pond turtle. They're an upland species. So um, while there's no there's not much natural fire anymore in uh, in Massachusetts um, so these early successional habitats are really important um, for the turtles that's where they come and spend um, they come to nest and they come to forage in the summer um, another reason uh, so development is another reason why they're um, why they're rare um, and basically habitat loss be it from development or change of use or early successional areas growing into mature forest and by early successional uh, environments, you mean places like power right of ways and exactly. and, and, and areas like this uh, that are sort of broken. Uh, now, where are they in their lifespan of the year? They're mm -hmm. nesting, correct? They'll be starting to nest soon, right? Exactly. Um, June is the the high time for them to come out and nest. They're they're looking for open sandy areas because they can dig down um, and create a, a cavity that they place their eggs, um, which incubate just like a just like a chicken in many ways. But um, they do lay them and then move on. spend the winters underground. Now, um, you have one with you. I do. In the box. Mm -hmm. Let me see if it's there. Okay. <laughs> I gave my <laughs> So, my colleague, are we live? My colleague actually took, took the turtles oh, to a okay. different location. Oh, okay. But we're going to see the turtles later. You will. Um, what should people do if they find one? people find one, um, they should, either, if it's in a habitat where there's not any risk of it um, being near a road, um, they can take a photo um, and not pick it up and leave it because the turtle knows what it's doing. Um, if it is near a road, what we advise is um, to move it to a safe distance in the, in the direction that the turtle was moving. Um, so if you find it at the edge and it's about to cross a road, but it's heading across it, so then you can move it. Um, other than that, um, we, uh, encourage, we don't encourage any um, handling of state listed species. You do need a special permit for that. Um, but today, if you find one, you should feel very lucky because they're a rare species. Um, they're exciting. They, I think they look really cool. Um, We're going to meet them in a minute. <laughs> yeah, in a little bit. Um, this is an area where we have had a, a study done um, that Eversource uh, funded as part of a, a project that they had to do. And um, we know that there's a really uh, strong population here, um, and we're excited to, to show it to everyone. We're, we're excited about turtles. We like to get other people excited about turtles. Great. Well, you're going to start the demonstration. I thank you very much for your time. Excellent. Thank you. Ah, thank you. So this is Jim Kinney with The Republican and, and Mass Live doing Facebook Live here. We're in Agawam uh, with the folks from Eversource. They do a training every year to teach 
uh, contractors and teach their employees what to do in turtle habitat. And this is turtle habitat, uh, as we just learned. And this is the time of year when they're active. So as, as good environmental stewards, they go out of their way to teach their employees and their contractors what to do if they find a turtle, or how to keep them out of harm's way when they come through and do the vegetation clearing when they mow these rights of way. In, in a minute, we're going to meet a couple of, of turtles who um, are part of mass wildlife. Uh, and then we're going to go find some and learn about some in the wild. We have a uh, turtle sniffing dog here. She's a uh, six year old German short haired pointer named Jada. And Scott is her handler. And we're going to learn about her and we're going to learn about turtles. And we're kind of gathering up here to do the demonstration. So we're going to join Mass Wildlife and Eversource. And then we're going to take a little bit of a hike. If anybody has questions, I can answer them. They are state-listed species. That's fine. I really get it. If they put them out, I'm not going to worry about it. Five and a half miles. Turtle. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, those are them, huh? That is a what? Eastern box turtle. Yep. It's an eastern box turtle. Yep. Okay. That, how old is that? This animal's probably at least 30 years of age, if not older. Um, no given kidding. the size and how much wear is on the shell, it would suggest that it's about at least 30 plus years of age. And, and she is a female. How do we know? Well, it how her shell is formed, the size of mm -hmm. her tail, are the two primary ways to tell. And the other one in your other hand? Is a wood turtle, also mm -hmm. a female. Okay. Uh, same way, the, the shape of the shell and the size of the tail. And these are both state-listed species, yeah. but the yeah. kind of thing that someone will find. Look how beautiful yeah. that orange color. Exactly, so both these species are found within rights of way. They're a special concern. And uh, yeah, so that's why, it's, why we're here today. In the, they're an upland species, so that means they live in dry ground. Yep, the box turtle is found exclusively in the uplands, so the forest, fields, and meadows. The wood turtle is found within uh, meadows, fields, forests, and rivers and streams. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. All right, everybody, and we'll kick it off. All right, so let's do a quick safety message. Uh, like I said before, this is an active right away, so just keep your eye out for trips and falls, just things like poison ivy. I really want to emphasize ticks. Make sure you check yourself after the site visit. If you really want to be extra safe, tuck in your shirt, uh, tuck in your pants into your socks. And uh, if you want any type of bug spray, Bill Hayes has some right here. See him. I find that just uh, following those BMP, tuck in your shirt. So this is Jim Kinney with the Republican at Mass Live doing Facebook Live from a training session held by Eversource uh, on turtles, how to protect them, how to protect their habitat. Um, turtle habitat. We're looking at eastern box turtle and wood turtle. <laughs> so yeah, this is a lot of fun. I think Dave said it before. Uh, you know, even though this is a requirement, it's really a fun day, and it's uh, you know just gets us out to do the things. It really, as human beings, are the right things to do, making sure we're protecting our turtle friends and any type of wildlife that uses our right of way along with us to do our maintenance work, to service our customers. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Dave. But does anyone have any questions first, or any additional safety messages they want to bring up? All right. Thank you very much. Great. As I said before, this is going to be a fun day. It's a nice day in the field. It's a gorgeous afternoon. Uh, we're going to go into five groups. So in a minute, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Count off into the five groups. We'll have five separate segments of the right-of-way that we will survey. 
and ultimately we will hopefully find not only actual box turtles but some cabbages that are also hidden in the uh, habitat for you to find. They will be positioned in areas where we would typically find a box turtle. It's kind of our insurance plan if we don't find one today. And you're welcome to take the cabbage home if you want for later for coleslaw or whatever you might like. So consider it a bonus in that case. <laughs> At the end, we'll, we'll start off in five groups. We'll have a quick little introduction. We'll break out, we'll do the survey, so we'll come back. It'll be a fun little quiz, we'll pass us some candy, give us some prizes, and we'll wrap up. And uh, all the data from today is really useful. It allows us to track this particular population. So you are making a difference. So uh, I appreciate your time and effort and uh, give some fun. So we're gonna start on this side. So the first participant might be you. Let's go one and then we'll kind of fish our way around the group until we get to the end. Everyone have a number. Yes. All right. First goal has been accomplished. <laughs> so, uh, Lauren, which are the which is each number? Do you have a? Do you have yeah. one? I'm, I'm number one. Brian has two. I've got three. Three. Four. Four. Four and five. So we're going to attempt to break out into those uh, five groups. Try to stagger it yourselves first. There'll be a brief introduction, and then we'll break out. So one's right here. Two new over here. Okay, this is Jim Kinney with the Republican in Mass Live. I'm out in the field today with Eversource. They're having a training for themselves and for their contractors learning about turtle habitat, how to protect turtles, and how to protect the breeding populations that are local. Uh, turtles like the edges of forests, they like uh, brushlands that are growing back in, which is exactly where they have power right-of-ways. So they're, they like power right-of-ways as, as habitat. And this is the time of year where they're out looking for sandy locations to grow eggs, to lay their eggs. So we're going to join one of the training sessions here. This is Scott and his dog. Uh, Who sniffs for turtles? My first dog was a German Shepherd, a female German Shepherd, and uh, she had helped me train that dog. And then I worked with her for seven years, and then I got this dog, and she helped me train this dog. Get started. But then having turtles with radio transmitters on them. When you're training them, they say you got to set them up for success. So you got to set them up downwind of what you, you want them to find. You try to start out really easy and then you make it more and more complicated as you go. And uh, they eventually figure it out. She trained for just turtles? Yeah, I mean, I, I only originally trained her on box turtles, but she's, um, she's she finds any other turtle. Um, she's found wood turtles, uh, spotted turtles, painted turtles, um, no blanding turtles. I'm sure if she came across one, she'd be. Yeah. But she's a bird dog. She's got a really soft mouth. So, uh, she. So, actually, the worst thing about it is she actually carries them so gently, sometimes she drops them. Uh, but I just, if I just whip out the food really quick, give, show that to her, she'll give me the turtle and I can give her the treat. She does a point she when she was a puppy she pointed if a leaf blew by she would point at it. And uh, I that was something I, I was planning to like capture that and get her to use that. And then, uh, unfortunately uh, the very first time I went down with the turtle dog spotted me. And I didn't want to discourage I rewarded her for finding the turtle obviously, right? I was excited and happy that she found one. And then uh, after that she just kept picking them up. So it actually comes out kind of convenient sometimes because she goes through anything. That sometimes these turtles will hang out under thick rose bush patches and things like that that you just can't even get into. And she'll go through anything and get down on her belly and crawl through the thick brush. And it does. 
I would, she doesn't find every single turtle. She misses turtles sometimes. Um, best conditions yeah. are if it's like hot and humid, or if you just had like a rainstorm come through and then the sun comes out. The scent sticks to moisture. So she's really, she and plus also that, that type of situation. The turtles are going around too. The slugs come out, things come out that they like to eat. So, um, combination where it makes it easier for everybody, for humans and the dog, to find them. But she does a good job. We had a project, an Eversource project, a couple of years ago where we had four people working, uh, a team of two teams of two and her, and she found over half of all the turtles by herself. And, and then a lot of the ones, and we were putting radio transmitters on them, and a lot of the ones that she found led us to other ones. So that we found because we were tracking that turtle. Yeah. Yeah. So I give her partial credit. Um, we're going to have, uh, so we have. I think you said mentioned we have the scavages out there. Um, I also brought five uh, box turtle shells with me, and I think all the groups are going to check them out. But down here on the right, we've got a like marked out as very small, it was a little brush pile. I marked it out with pink flagging. So maybe we can stop there. That's on the way to where I put the cabbages out. So we can stop there, and you guys can try looking for the turtles. <coughs> take turns. There's five shells in this one brush pile. Um, you can see them all with your eyes. You don't have to move anything. So you can stand outside the flag and just look and see if you can find all five of them. So we'll start there. Um, I guess we can go whenever we want. Just down here to the right, not too far. So once again, this is Jim Kinney with the Republican and MassLive.com out here doing uh, training with Eversource. They do this every year where they teach their contractors and their employees how to find turtles in order to protect them and protect their habitat. Turtles enjoy areas where the brush is cleared and, and where the, the trees are growing back, back in, which are power right-of-ways. In this time of year, they tend to be out. That's our drug, or turtle sniffing rather, dog friend, Jada. And Scott is her wildlife biologist handler owner. And we're here in Agawam, Massachusetts, uh, at a place that uh, ever sort of this, this training. So now we're just kind of hiking back in the woods. Now this is set up as a training exercise, so there are cabbages as kind of practice for these guys but they've never not actually found turtles while doing this so we're going to find some box turtles some woods turtles we're going to have some fun if you have any questions throw them into the into the comments Earlier we learned what to do if you find one in, in your own life, if it's, if it's near a road, you can move it to a location, move it in the direct, to a safe spot in the direction in which it's going. If it's not in the road, just leave it go, because it knows what it's doing. Oh yeah, really? 
nine to uh, twelve or so. Yeah, I would say. So we had a, a number no. of turtles out here. With um, everywhere, so we're uh, I'm just gonna make a track. Definitely out here. Let's not miss one. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, this was actually it was, a, it was called the Creator and Springfield Reliability Project, and it was a it was basically doubling. The, at least doubling the service out here. There was one set of poles and they, they restrung those on new towers and pulled another set, set next to them. Uh, so if you guys want to see, you can see the inside the flag here. There's five cells. Actual box cells. And this is kind of representative of how you might find them. Sometimes they're hard, easy, sometimes they're hard. But most of the time, these turtles are very secretive and they got pretty good camouflage. They spend most of their time, especially during the day, just tucked in uh, behind, under a brush <laughs> in leaf litter. It's right in front of us, I didn't right? See that. And this, this is exactly how you might expect to see them. Oh, just little pieces of their yeah, shell. Something, so. huh? <laughs> a lot of times, if there's like a log on the ground, they'll be. They like to have like part of their body obscured by something, or or all of their body. Like the turtle guy right there. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Mine. Another one right here. here. So it's five in here. See if you can find all five. Yep. I set them all out and I was like, all right, where are they? I had to go back around <laughs> yeah, and look for them. Yeah, that's a tough one. That guy picked right up on it. Yeah, that, and that's not uncommon. To be yeah. under the leaves yep. like that. They, just... they, 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 we call it a form. They, they back themselves in or push themselves in under the leaf litter. And you might only just see a little piece of the top of the shell. Wow. Now, you really got to develop That's the reason an eye why I yeah. trained a dog because I did this for years before I had the dog and I was, I was always worried, you know, I had a, I'd have a, a crew of guys behind me with with mowers and stuff waiting to go, you know, and I'd be trying to get through and yeah, keep moving, you know, so I didn't hold things up, but I was always worried about finding the turtles. And uh, well, it's good you placed them like this because it gives all of us the opportunity to see how secretive they can be and how hard they are to, to Spot, yeah, you know? it's different from, from looking at the cabbages. Area, right? yeah. Yeah. The cabbage yeah, kind of right. gives you a little bit of an idea of maybe yeah. where you might expect to find the turtles. We're gonna horn in on your yeah, go right on in. So Scott's hitting them inside here, everybody's okay. looking inside the flag. So you can see why a stick comes in handy, you can bend stuff over. And, Okay. Oh, I don't know that. There's five, there's five, right, Scott? Five, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because you wouldn't think that it would blend in like that either. Yeah, yeah, that one in the This is Jim Kinney with the Republican and Mass Live doing a Facebook Live uh, video out in Agawam with Eversource. What we're doing is we're watching Eversource train its crews and its contractors on how to spot common turtle species, uh, the, the kind that like to live under power rights of way. And this teaches the crews to do a turtle sweep, find them, and keep them safe because uh, they're they're state registered species. They're, they they um, oftentimes meet their death uh, with mowers and roads and that sort of thing. And this is an important time of the year to learn about turtles because now is when you see them out and are about. They're they're getting out in the open sort of spaces like this. Uh, where there's some woods and then there's some open ground and sandy soil where they can make a nest and lay eggs. Sometimes you can hear them going through the leaves. Yeah, you know, I'll find them after that. But, you know. It was by water. So I, I yeah, the heard painted, it, but I thought it was still the waterfall. Yeah, the painted turtles are strictly aquatic. I mean, they'll come out to bask and the females will come up to out on the up ones the nest, but yeah. it's very easy to walk right by them. Yeah, it's definitely easy to walk by them. <laughs> <laughs> you take a look at 
Tim's got a, a stick there. Uh, I, use, I usually have one too that it, it helps you to you can lift up brush piles with it and push the vegetation aside and it helps to yeah. helps you to much find more it. efficient. And you don't have to bend over every time you want to move something either. What we're going to do here is we're going to move along here if, if people are training and uh, learning about the habitat. There goes Jessica. There's Jadis. All the way down the end. I think it's because a lot of times that's where the shrubs can be thickest. They don't get mowed during maintenance and they still get plenty of sunlight to get nice and thick and they'll, uh, they'll be hanging out right along those edges a lot of times. What do these species eat? Uh, they eat, they're pretty opportunistic. They eat spiders and slugs and uh, they'll eat dead things, carry on, dead frogs. Um, Mushrooms, uh, blueberries, raspberries. I think their favorite thing is slugs, though. I see them eat slugs a lot of times. Like my favorite French restaurant. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Farm to table. <laughs> yeah, farm to table. guys don't find any turtles on the way down we'll come back this this edge Scott yep. we've found a lot of turtles along this edge in the past Down here, that thing brings to the junction, Aglom Junction. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's and where we're at. That's where he's in. Somebody must come back here with horses. Yes, a bat out of hell, and she she'd 
get up, like she jump first and just go and go and go. And I, I was afraid of losing her. And yeah. um, the dog trainer, you know, said, you know, would you rather have her get run over by a car or, or zap her? Yeah. And I was like, well, I guess I'll zap her, you know. Yeah. And I, we didn't uh, put it that way, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it worked. <laughs> Well, how old is she now? She's six now. So she's probably toned she's down good. a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, she when they're pu when they're be. young, they really yeah. rambunctious. Yeah. I, very rarely do I actually give her a little zap, and it's uh, pretty rare. She, as I do, that little vibrate. She turns right around and goes back. Oh yeah, nice. Good girl, come on. <laughs> good girl. Yeah, come here. Me. You gotta give her a treat when you do that? Not every time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I hate the zap, but I love it too. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I love a relationship. Um, yeah, the very first time I actually used this thing was here, and it was in the woods over there, and it was, I could see all the way across the woods, and she jumped this flock of birds. that ringing in the back of my head I was like zap and she went yay jumped and it just kept going I was like, mm -hmm. wow come on good girl come on keeps going zapped her again yay kept going wow I was like, oh my gosh I'm like Jadis come third time she didn't listen I zapped her the third time and she stopped she turned she looked at me and just came running at me straight at me 100 miles an hour and I was like and then I, she knocked me over and I, good, and I treated her good girl good girl good girl you know and that was it that was she understood what they did. yeah right once they <laughs> takes a while yeah. for starting out right that was it really you do any pheasant hunting i have never with her i'm always afraid that she'll she it, already yeah. does kind of like sniff out birds and chipmunks and red squirrels and stuff and she's got enough distractions as it is right. and I really want her to find turtles you know right. so all right so uh I hung I hid 10 cabbages in between these two flags and the two flags down there um if you remember what we were talking about you know a lot of times they use edges and they um, they hide under Are there real turtles back here, Scott? Oh yeah. That real hot spot is, is further over that way. Put it back? Yeah, put it back. There's one, I think there was 10. Yeah, there you go. Unless you want to take it for a salad or something. Once again, Jim Kinney here with the Republican in Mass Live. We're doing uh, right. training today with Eversource, where we're watching them teach their employees and their contractors how to locate common upland turtle species, uh, find them to move them to a safe location before they work in an area. Uh, right now, these workers are back here. They've got some cabbages that have been put here so that they can find them as training there's also actual turtle so we might find some turtle and we're here with jadis who's a uh, turtle sniffing dog six-year-old german short hair pointer and her and scott her handler owner trainer who's a wildlife biologist with the, one of the construction companies, or one of the maintenance companies that Eversource uses. So we're out here looking. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Earlier in the video, if you wanna rewind it, we learned, uh, we saw some live turtle and we uh, learned about them, a little bit about their habitat, their biology, what to do if you find one. 
And this is the time of year, as we've learned, uh, where you're going to be able to see them a lot because they're out finding places to lay eggs. Scott, what does she do if she finds one? themselves in under just leaves and stuff so you have to look look from different angles that mental picture of real turtles in your head while you're looking too because there could be a real one in here somewhere. Spots, okay. Kind of <laughs> clear, like check areas. And she uses okay. that while she's working. <laughs> Can we uh, take a look at your station four? Yeah. Are we supposed to rotate through the different uh, stations? Yeah, we could. Really well, once again, Jim Kinney here with the Republican in Mass Live. I'm kind of reaching the end of my battery life here, so we're going to cut the video off. Uh, I was hoping that people would find a turtle in the wild to show you. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Probably happened right after I ran out of battery. So, uh, look back at uh, Mass Live and in the Republican tomorrow. If you're a subscriber, if you're looking for it on the newsstand, we'll have coverage of this. And my colleague Don Trieger is here getting lots of photos and, and lots of video for you. Uh, so I'm going to sign this off before I run out of video, before I run out of, of electricity.